Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about unsurprisingly the subject of noise. It's going to be a very quick video that I've kind of thrown together here in the background today to tackle this subject because this is an area that I talk about quite a lot on my videos. Whenever I say I've got a unit in the test area and I vaguely point in the other direction, this is part of that area. This is where I have a bunch of NASs that are generally being set up for screen recording and also doing some other tests. There's another shelf over there and there's another one over there, but this is the one I want to talk about the most today. You may already have noticed in this video that the sound quality is very, very different and that's because this is not an area I find myself in Predominantly, this is where the units are designed to do their job. And a lot of you, when you do get a NAS, a network attached storage device for the first time, you will find that the device will be maybe in a server room or an attic or a basement or a far off area. But that doesn't account for all of us. In fact, a number of users, when they buy a NAS for the first time, will be working in very close proximity to this device, be it that it's on a desk being utilized by multiple people for editing or backups, or just generally playing with files for distribution, or it's gonna be a home-based NAS that you're gonna be utilizing for media, maybe as a DLNA media server, or you're gonna be using HDMI output, and therefore the TV or the viewing experience is gonna be in the same room as your NAS. And a lot of you don't seem to realize the difference some of these devices make in terms of noise. There's a number of different factors when it comes to them. So what I've got right now is four NASs here on the table that represent different brands, but also different eras of this technology and how it's been put together. So you may have noticed a persistent noise in the background during the course of this video. And there are four NASs on this table. We have one in idle mode. We have one here that's in live access mode, but not actually being fully accessed on all the drives. And we've got these two on the end, one of which is performing a RAID rebuild, and the other one is doing data scrubbing. Consequently, these two on either end from Synology and QNAP are right now having live access, raw pounding access to all of the drives inside. And the noise is predominantly coming from these two. But unsurprisingly, the number of things that play their part in the configuration of the NAS array will, of course, affect the output of audio levels and decibels and stuff like that on the device in the real-world environments. Now, there are lots of ways in which we can control that. But before we go through that, let me just give you a closer listen to each of these devices using my mic. So there's my mic right there. Hello. And we're going to go to the two idle devices first. There's a little bit of noise there, as you can hear. Now we're gonna move over to the device doing the RAID scrubbing. As you can see, the noise has gone up a little bit there, but not too much. And that last one is a RAID rebuild happening in real time with all the drives being accessed. Now. It's worth highlighting that even though we've got the RAID rebuild happening and that's a kind of a very rare instance in any utilization of a network attached storage device, it's worth highlighting that live access to multiple drives at once with lots of read write happening to all of the drives at the same time in a, say a RAID 5 environment is actually quite common. So if you're in close proximity to this device in the way that I've set it up, that's the kind of noise you're gonna get. But it isn't as clear cut as that because these two devices here do have one major difference between them, and that's the drives inside. Both of them are utilizing traditional hard drives, mechanical hard drives with, you know, platters inside and an arm and an actuator or whatever reading those disks. But the QNAP here is using standard class hard drives. The Synology is using Pro series drives, and what enterprise quality made for much higher pressure work and for longer warranties but they make more noise. And as you can see going between them, the noise just dip. Once again, let's move that mic between the enterprise disks and the standard disks. There's the enterprise disks. And I can see the audio volume in the background dipping down.
Now, of course, more enterprise level hard drives are going to be more pr pr prominent in bigger RAID arrays. So chances are you're going to be having those drives anyway. So is there any other ways in which we can counter this noise level? Well, one of the ways in which you can counter it with particularly a lot of modern generation NASes is to go for ones with um, either hybrid build chassis or full plastic external chassis. In the case of the Synology, it is a plastic chassis around um, an aluminium internal, whereas the QNAT is metal all the way around. And metal NASes, particularly in larger arrays of eight bays and more, will produce more vibrations overall, and therefore will heighten those clicks and whirs and noises. Indeed, the spinning up of these discs in any given time will be far noisier on an enterprise level disc. Now, there is another way in which we can counter noise within these systems, and that is, of course, switching to SSDs rather than hard drives. Traditional hard drives, such as this one, this is a WD Red. This WD Red hard drive comprised of a few platters inside there, discs, and the arm inside is noisy. It's not as noisy as the enterprise level drives that are inside that Synology, but they're still a little noisier than the current alternative SSD. SSDs have no moving parts, and I'm sure a number of you know that SSDs inside your system, although considerably more expensive, about three to five times more expensive at the capacity level, produce almost no noise. And the noise that is generated in the background will only be the fan and the hum of the system. SSDs largely completely eliminate noise uh, comparatively uh, when you look at compared with hard drives, I should say. But on top of that, the last thing you can do is look at NASes that have been designed to lower noise. There are a number of different NAS solutions out there where noise is compl almost completely eliminated, such as the silent NAS, the HS453DX, the TBS453DX, both from QNAP. From the Synology side, we can look at the Slim series with a number of those solutions arriving with almost you know, barely noticeable noise, noise uh, being generated by the systems themselves, and with a focus towards SSD storage in those devices, noise is reduced even further still. Now, another thing that will happen in the background of any NAS is temperature um, uh, monitoring. When you look at any NAS solution, it's not just the noise levels of the discs inside and the chassis itself vibrating, but the hotter the environment you're in, the more the fans that are on the rear of these devices will kick in automatically. This can be scaled um, manually. You can go to the settings of pretty much any NAS brand and scale up the fan, the RPM, and you can light, um, uh, heighten it or lower it depending on your needs. But bear in mind, setting those manually and fixing them to a low RPM may be uh, detrimental to the internal hardware of your device. So it is recommended to keep those on automatic, but make sure these are in areas with lots of active airflow or just in a cooler area overall. Because if it's in a room filled with people that lot all that CO2 being generated with no windows open, those fans are going to have to work that bit harder and they're going to ramp up and the heat generating uh, generation will of course result in a higher audio volume. And if you're within one meter of these devices, you are going to notice this incessant drone quite a lot. But talking of incessant drones, thank you so much for watching. Click subscribe if you want to learn more. And if you have enjoyed this video or have questions about noise levels in NAS and why, oh why, the more expensive ones make more noise because of the size and why the quiet ones seem to be cheaper, yet, you know, no noise being generated, that's for the follow-up video. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions, do let me know in the comments and I'll see you next time.